Hey, Russ Johns here, and I'm on Hope Revealed today with Matt Crump, and I love the content creation, the creativity, and the faith and hope that he drives and shares with the world. I uh, love creating content. You can find me on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and at russjohns.com. Connect with me. I'd love to build a relationship with you and share some smiles are free, kindness is cool, and we can make it matter. So I want you to enjoy the day. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Hope Revealed. I am super excited to have a friend here today that you're going to absolutely love. If you don't know him, you should. And if you do, you already know how awesome he is. His name is Russ Johns. And Russ, I'm super excited to have you with us here today at Hope Revealed. Thank you so much, Matt. I, you know, I've been following you for a while and going back and forth and, you know, being a bearded brother, I, 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 have to, I have to commend you and applaud you on your, your masterful beard and experience here in, on LinkedIn Live and Hope Reveals and everything that you're doing in, in the community. I love it. I appreciate yeah, thanks you. so much, man. It's been, uh, it's been a pleasure getting to meet you here on LinkedIn as well. And, and uh, we talk a lot off camera and uh, yep. <laughs> you're always uh, intentional about um, a relationship that it's not just posts. It's personal messages to me, and uh, I always value that so much. That's uh, that's what relationships are about, and and uh, I'm pretty pretty big on that as well. I can't stand superficial stuff, and and uh, and you can't either, obviously, because uh, you take time out for folks, and I really appreciate that, man. And um, yeah. so you you have uh, I was on a show with with you earlier today, uh, your Pirates broadcast, right? So um, yeah. That is uh, that's going well. Why don't you tell tell us a little bit about that? How that got started? Why'd you why'd you go into that and and how and all that kind of stuff? Well, you know my background. I got into uh, I, I tell people that uh, I actually got into advertising in '85 and uh, technology and everything else. And I've I've learned a lot. I've been able to experience a lot of different things. And I'm at the point in my life where. I want to be able to share some of these things because I see a lot of people struggling, a lot of overwhelm. And one of the things that I wanted to do is highlight some of the people, interesting people doing interesting things on LinkedIn. And I thought the whole idea of pirate broadcast was, you know, back in the day of AM radio, there were, you know, ships offshore that were broadcasting illegally. Well, they weren't illegal because they weren't on FCC territory. It was, a, it was like, okay, we can do what we want because we don't need to ask permission. And I didn't have LinkedIn live access at the point at that point in time. So I went to YouTube and was streaming live. And then I would, I would bring that into LinkedIn as if it were a LinkedIn live. And I would call it pirate broadcast because it's like, Hey, I, I can do this because I know how to do this and I'm going right. to do this. <laughs> so it's like, so that was the that was the uh, seed that was planted for LinkedIn Live, and then I, I was able to get LinkedIn Live access. See, I'm on that, that access that they have called LinkedIn Delayed. So uh, it's another program that they offer to people that are not on LinkedIn Live. I just uh -huh. post videos after I record them. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and so. The other part of it is, is I, I've been doing two minute tips. I had done two minute tips for a long time and I've been in podcasting and radio and television and outdoor advertising in, in different capacity. And did I just put your face on outdoor advertising. Was it like your mug out there and stuff? How did, <laughs> did they fit the beard in there? How did that work? Was that well, no, it was actually, I was actually uh, what they call a bill poster back in the day when they actually a attached Posters Were you the guy stuff. that climbed up like a thousand feet and stuck the stuff to the thing? Yes, yes. You're, you're crazy, dude. I mean, they're I, absolutely, I would never, I couldn't imagine that. What about those ones that are way up there? Did you go there too? Uh, yes, absolutely. absolutely. How did you do that and stick the stuff up there and not be like, hey, Fred, hang on. Whoa! <laughs> well, I'll tell you, and, and, and you know, in the, in the early days, it's like, Fall protection was not necessarily the first thing that you thought about. And uh, that's what I tell people. I'm I telling thought. you, Russ, if I'm a thousand feet in the air, the first thing I'm thinking <laughs> You're about wear something, is huh? falling. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. 
Yeah, it's it was crazy. It's crazy because uh, you, you know, and I think back on that now. And I, I, I cringe because it's like, holy cow, you know, Why there's so many times. That? That, Look how high that is. Yeah. <laughs> what kind it's of like, crazy I'm not getting on that. Up there. <laughs> well, I had to get up on the roof the other day to fix a, a vent on the roof. And it's like, I don't like climbing these ladders at all. So. <laughs> oh my Lord. It's amazing. It's crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> Things change. And, and, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. And, you know, that's the, that's the whole point is it's so fascinating to me about these things that you don't think about in life, you don't really realize what's going on around you until you understand, oh, this person does this job, and that's an interesting job, that's an interesting thing that they're doing, and I think other people should know about it. It's like you don't see a red car until you buy a red car, yeah, and right. then all of a sudden they're around, right? Yeah. You're like and, the Mike Rowe of pirate broadcasting, the, the dirty yeah. jobs guy. Like, what's exactly, that? Like? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you take dirty jobs and it's LinkedIn, you know, opportunities here. But, and, and I've ran into some interesting people, Matt, that are you like yourself. You know, you're doing some things that my audience or my community sees. And just because the way, you know, social media is structured, we don't get the opportunity to see these people right. in a way that, really highlights what you're the value that you're bringing the gifts behind that you're the bringing scenes forward. kind of thing yeah, yeah. Looking from the, behind the camera yeah and you have it you have so many gifts to share you know you you got what what is the uh opportunity you have coming up the uh you got an event coming up that i wanted to i wanted to share out yeah, our uh, mastermind called the, yeah, the mastermind mm -hmm. and, and so so these things these nuggets of knowledge and it, if anybody has an opportunity to hang out with matt you know take the opportunity because He's a cool guy, and he's also a musician, which we have in common too. By yes. the way, I just it's don't like climb big tall towers and put up signs. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, well, you know, I, I I played music for years, and I started playing clubs when I was 16, and I you're, toured in you, buses and everything you else. Getty, your Getty Lee is your real your stage name. Was that your stage name? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell people I was the uh, I was the bearded drummer of ZZ Top. <laughs> Because right. Frank Beard doesn't have a beard. <laughs> I always thought it was ironic. So. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> but it's, it's fun and fascinating, Matt. And, and you know, I just want to highlight people like yourself that are doing great work. And How long have you been doing that now? I, I, I'm probably five days a week. I, I probably have 30 shows in. 30 shows? Oh, yeah. my gosh. That's and then I think I had on my two minute tips, I think I had a, I think I have about 140 episodes. You're doing the pirate broadcast every day. Yeah. Monday through Friday. Oh, wow. Like a regular TV show kind of a thing or, yeah. or well, regular TV show. They're not five days a week either, but like yeah. a, a morning news show or something like that. Yeah. It's a uh, LinkedIn highlights, you know, it's, it's like, Hey, and I'm booked all the way through. I'm starting to book, uh, December. Yeah, that's great. So, yeah, there's always opportunities and a lot of folks out there, uh, obviously, since I'm doing a podcast as well, they are, yeah. uh, people are, are looking for opportunities to get on shows. Yeah. Uh, there's actually coaching out there for people that coach people how to get on podcasts. And, uh, you know, I get people that reach out to me all the time. I don't, I don't say yes to everybody, but uh, mm. most people I do. And you say only interesting people. So I guess you, you don't take dull, dumb people or anything like that. If you haven't been on Russ's it. show yet, I, uh, I'm just, I just like, Yeah. You might know what scheduled. I don't know what to say. Yeah. I don't know what to say. And we take here, anybody over here at Hope Reveal. Anybody got a story, we take it at Hope Reveal. Come on over. I think, I think, I think you as, a, as an interviewer would probably be able to pull out the interesting in anyone i would try because that's your that's your personality and, and you know you you understand what it's like to have a guest that doesn't have yes no you know it's like yeah it's like pulling, pulling teeth. teeth absolutely yeah. so, absolutely I mean, so okay so you got into the marketing world and yeah. um uh, you you've had quite some stories we talked a little earlier off camera yeah uh, a lot of incredible amazing stories and some pretty horrific ones at the same time. Uh -huh. um, and well, first of all, let's kind of get back into some things about, about you. So you live on, in the lower Western side of the country, Arizona, right? Your Arizona yeah. territory. 
And so, uh, yeah. Go ahead. So Phoenix. Where Phoenix you area. At, where you started at? How you how you landed in Arizona? I mean, what's tell us the backstory of Russ. Oh, the backstory, of Russ. Well, I uh, I, I arrived here from more family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I am. Uh, oh, that's. Uh, I'll give you the short version. Okay. That's about good. every we seven to ten years. Time, so that's good. Yeah, every <laughs> se- about every seven to ten years, I've moved. I've been in the Northwest most of my life. You know, uh, Seattle, Portland, Squim, uh, Bellevue. Squim. Where the heck uh, is Squim? S- well, let me tell you about Squim. Squim okay. is in the rain shadow of the Olympics. So it's out on the peninsula, just south of Victoria, BC, across the the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Wow. So if you've ever seen the uh, the uh, vampire movies, I don't know what they were. I didn't watch them, but uh, the rainforest, there, it's the third one of three temperate rainforests in the world. Wow. And, and Squim is in the rain shadow of that rainforest. So it gets about anywhere from 11 to 18 inches of rain a year as opposed to Seattle, which gets 40 inches a year. Wow. So every, every mile out of Squim, you get another inch of rain a year, <laughs> which is so kind of crazy. If you're there, you're not feeling so good. Does it make you kind of squimish? <laughs> yes, I get very oh, squimish. Get squimish. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. And, and when you come over the valley, Matt, there's actually a blue hole above Squim in the weather. It can be it can be pouring down rain in Seattle, and by the time you get to Squim, there's a blue hole in the sky. It's crazy. It's it's it is crazy. It's a, a weather anomaly. I had thirty acres over there. Had animals, farm. I was Farmer John's at that point in time. Wow. Ra- raised my family over there. We had llamas and lavender. It's the it's one of the uh, top lavender producers in the U.S. right now. Wow. Uh, uh, just because of the valley and, and the, it has one of the oldest irrigation festivals in, in the country as well. So yeah, I, I typically I like to hit those irrigation festivals, buddy. They're, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they're pretty they're, highlights of the day. They're a hoot. And so I, uh, you know, life changed for me in about 2002 and then I was in Seattle for a while and then I relocated to Houston where my son is already now. He's, he's there now in 2010 then 2017 here. I moved to Arizona to care for, help care for my folks. Dad's 91, has dementia, mom's 83, and you know, has a little bit of vertigo going on. So mm-hmm. I, I, I'm a caregiver and uh, a content producer. And, you know. You got a lot going on, my friend. It's a lot, lot of work, and uh, it's not easy being a caregiver uh, myself with cancer. And then I, I do a lot of interviews with a lot of people that are terminal and uh-huh. Um, you know, a lot of it, I feel more for the caregivers and most of the people that are going through the disease themselves feel more for the caregivers than themselves, because it's a lot of hard work yeah. to, uh, to serve somebody like that and to really, really give of yourself and give up yourself for that other person's needs. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people like that around our country, around the world that, that live like that. Uh, or have lived like that for years. Um, it's just a, a heroic and selfless and loving type of person uh, to be something like that. So appreciate you for being a caregiver. It's an amazing, amazing thing, especially the time you get to be with your father, even though he doesn't really probably know you at this point. And your mom, no. who may she, maybe she wants to know you. I don't know. It depends on the day. <laughs> Well, I I am I am truly blessed, Matt, to have a, a caring, loving family. And um, you know, I was second of six kids. I've I've since lost uh, two sisters, and uh, you know, we've always been very tight knit uh, family. And uh, I, I'm I'm just I I wake up with gratitude every day as a result of the opportunity. I've designed my life to be able to do this in, in a way that I can help and give back and contribute to, you know, the benefit of others. And, you know, just like you're doing, you know, this, this broadcast is, you know, helping somebody. If, if we can help one person see a different perspective yeah. and change their view on what life is about, because it's really about 
how much value can we create around us? Because that, that will impact and leave a legacy beyond this thing we call life. Absolutely. So I, I just, you know, and I'm, you know, just like yourself, and we've talked about this, it's like some days are really challenging. Some days are hard. And, yeah. you know, we, we go through tragedies and we go through transformation and we have to come out the other side and we have to believe in something bigger than ourselves. And I always, I always tell people that it's more, you, you cannot be depressed when you're doing something positive. Oh, absolutely. You're right. So it's, well, it's, it's really it's possible to be depressed, even if you're doing something positive. But yeah. it's, it's harder to make that choice. Well, it's harder to be, <laughs> yeah, down when you're doing good work. When you're doing up. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. And, and, and that's, a, that's an idea that I, you know, I like to share and I like to, a philosophy that I live by. And, and Yeah, so, that, so your thing like a smile a day keeps the doctor away and, yeah. and, and do things. Well. Kindness is cool. Smiles are free. Yeah, there you go. I just yeah. wanted you to say it. So where did that come from, from you? Why did you start saying that? You know, that really took off <clears throat> as therapy for myself after uh, my oldest son committed suicide. Mm. Uh, you know, May of two, Cinco de Mayo, 2017. I, rec uh, I received a panic call from my youngest son. He says, Dad, get here now. And I knew at that point in time, it was, um, there was problems. So I flew to Houston and, you know, found my son in uh, the hospital on life support. And, uh, you know, it was an unfortunate circumstance that he felt that that was his only option. And, uh, and as part of the healing process, I, I, you know, had to dig down and understand that that is not always easy for people to get through and past. And, and, uh, you know, when life is taken from you in an instant that you need to be blessed, you need to be full of gratitude for the things you have. And, you know, somebody, you know, not turning on their turn signal or, you know, <laughs> being rude or something else, it, it has less meaning when something so um, life changing happens that's so much bigger than yourself. And, and I just, and I have to share this because one, it reminds me that kindness is cool and it does matter and smiles are free. And if you can smile and help someone else in their day, ripple effect is it goes out and, you know, there's so many things you can do that cost absolutely nothing to help someone else have a better day. And if you can do that and share that and that, and that's what brought me out of my depth and my despair and, and the transformation from, you know, healing myself. And it's still a process, Matt, I'm not going to lie. It's been two years, you say? Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm, I mean, I'm a father, which is hard for me to imagine. Um, I don't want to. Um, that you'll never get over it. How are you getting through it? By sharing kindness. By putting out something positive in the world. You know, leaving breadcrumbs to a, a, a different outcome. Mm -hmm. You know, the suicide right now is just, it's, it's insane. And, you know, you being a vet and, and having, uh, you know, experience in, in the military, you understand that some of these people are, are hurting. Yeah. You know, churches are, are, are dwindling. People are hurting even more than they have before ever in the history of, you know, that I know of. I mean, in, that I don't, no, I don't know the data. Right there. I'll pause you right there because uh, we're coming right to it. But the one thing I hear as, uh, as, an, as an argument to that point, uh -huh. is that that that's always been happening we just notice it more because we have social media um and i, I think you're right with that i i think that that's we notice it more but i believe that there's there's things on the rise for sure I, yeah. and yeah we know more about it but people would say it's always been this way i don't think it's yeah. always been this bad and and here's the here's the thing is we 
whether it's good or bad, it's still tragic. You know, it's it, whether it's up or down, it, it's still tragic in one life. If and we we're can still make here it, at that point, if, we're if we can here. make a difference in one life, Matt, that's that's what matters. Well, and that's why I say make it matter. matter. Yeah, because if you it know? make if you make it matter, and it's true transformation in the heart of the other person, there's no way that it can't continue. Yeah, that other person's going to do the same thing. That's pretty amazing for you to be able to uh, to have that. I mean, how? I mean, you've been through so many things in your life. So how did you think you were able to arrive to that position? What made you do that? What kind of, what was that hope revealed in your life? What was that moment that made you say, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the thing to help people remember about smiling. I want to remember them about being mm -hmm. positive, right? I mean, when did that click for you? That you're like, this is what I'm, how and why? <laughs> um, there, there, there are several moments that made it click for me, and and one of the things when I was a kid, I was you know I was overweight. I you know I got in my fifth grade class. I was. I was in a fight probably every single week of the, of the year, you know, and it just conflict, a lot of conflict. And, and, and over the years, I've, I've learned that um, I've just made a choice, a conscious decision to make things better for me by making things better around me. Mm. Yeah, so say, say that again. I, I made a choice to make things better for me by making things better around me. That's really good. And, and, you know, it's like the, the, the old adage, you know, you are the accumulation of the five people you hang out with. And if, if you're in a position where you can actually encourage, cause I, I don't, I, I, I don't like the term influencer. I would, I much rather be labeled as an, encourager and in, if i can encourage those around me then i'm then i'm feeling more fulfilled myself yeah you know be the light be the change you want to see you know these things are conscious decisions and when you when you start practicing them they become habits and when they become habits they become easier and when you're when you find joy in the moment, it's hard to dwell in the pain. And it's, as you know, because you're a practitioner of this, is that you have a higher calling and, and something of value that you can hold on to and have faith in that you know that there's, there's a, a bigger, much more, uh, a much bigger purpose in your life than, than just sitting here on the couch complaining. Right. No, absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's pretty amazing. Um, and you've been through so many, I wish we had a lot of time. There's a lot of things we could talk about. Yeah. Um, but there's nothing uh, more tragic than, than the loss of, of a loved one, especially your own child. And uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of people that are going to be watching and listening. This, this show today are going to be able to understand and relate to what you're talking about. And uh, it's pretty devastating. I mean, I've had lots of loss in my life and uh, mm -hmm. close, close family and uh, relatives. And then, of course, through the war and different things, you see all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah. It's never, never an easy thing. And uh, we'll get back to that in a second. You, uh, you've chosen to do some things now with your, your career, uh, with uh, the broadcast that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have aspirations of of doing something more than that than just what you're doing right now or what's on the, what's in the pipeline for old, for old Russ? Well, uh, thank you for asking Matt. And, 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 and these kinds of opportunities are, uh, I cherish these opportunities because uh, I've always taken on the philosophy that, you know, you're a musician, you know what, it, you know what it's like to practice. You know, the pirate broadcast is a, is a practice. It, in in giving back to the community and i know through this this practicing 
that I will increase and improve on the, on the pirate broadcast. And, and I can't say exactly where it will end up. I just know that one of the gifts that I have is the ability and the opportunity to take technology and, and develop messages that I feel need to be shared, not only by myself, and I will share my, my own messages. However, I, I want to also include people like yourself and people that are doing good things out in the world that, that I find interesting and that I can share with that. Because I think, I think a lot of people are overwhelmed by the technology and they get overwhelmed by the fear of the unknown. Because mm -hmm. our only experience is in the past. We don't know what the future will hold. So if we, and if we take that leap of faith today, and, and start somewhere. And if, if I can encourage somebody to do that and see, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. We can do it together. We can actually do this together. And so I can bring someone on that hasn't had this opportunity and show them that it's, it's not the end of the world. It's not the, the death of you know, life, yeah. mankind. That, <laughs> and, you can, <laughs> and, you can, and you can share your gift. It's like, it's magic. Right. You know, it's, it's like, it's a beautiful thing. And so my goal is, and my mission in life is just to assist people going forward in becoming more um, open to the idea of sharing their gifts. Mm -hmm. That's so good, especially in the culture we're in, it's just going to get more and more uh, folks doing that. And um, some will get left in the dust and they'll feel left in the dust and they don't have to. And uh, shows like like what you're trying to do and and who you are as a person who always tries to give people a hand up and help in understanding how to do that and brush the dust off and say let's move on right so yeah. move on John <laughs> well see see now think of this we're we're living in the first generation of people that will be able to go to their kids their grandkids and you know future generations and see oh. Hey, that's what dad was doing back then. Look at that crazy guy. Yeah. Look at, you know, is that what granddad was doing? Is that, you know, great grandfather. This is your great grandfather. Look at what he was doing then. Yeah. Look at how it's changed since then. And you can actually see the evolution. I mean, I mean, it, blog, it boggles my mind. I know. And, you know, what the next hundred years will bring is, you know, to be determined. And if we can contribute and, encourage people to to bring gifts to the world and you know share kindness and share smiles and you know go out and make it matter you know if we can if we can change somebody's mind or attitude or perspective it's like road rage let's eliminate road rage by being a kind you know? <laughs> let people in i would love, no it. I would love it oh, yes man. my wife I open a door for it. somebody i have road rage too sometimes but i don't chase anybody down but there are times i like oh man <laughs> I don't. I wish I was in another town where they didn't know who I was because I want to go off right now. <laughs> I, I remember when I was growing up, we used to go on Sunday drives with the family, and my dad is like. Sometimes he would get so frustrated. He's like, "If I were driving a snow plow, I would, I would be at the front of the line." <laughs> You've heard some of those conversations too. It'd be funny if there are mics in people's cars on the road rage stuff. If you could just hear what some people say inside of those cars. Yeah. And you realize exactly. the funny thing. This is totally off topic, but. It's so funny when people are in their cars, they feel like they're in their private safety zone. Yeah. Like, I'm telling you, I see people like knuckle deep up inside of noses, do like that. <laughs> they don't think that we can see them. It's like, oh, I mean, I <laughs> you can't see me in my car. It's just going crazy. down the road. Oh, yeah. You know, everybody does it, but you try to yeah. wait for a country road. I'm saying, no traffic. Just wait, wait for the it. back roads. Wait for the back roads. Dude, at McDonald's, they got napkins. I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying, right? <laughs> just, saying, just saying. We're smiling, folks. Just sharing smiles today. All right. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, Russ. It's been. I'm glad we could laugh a little bit here too. Uh, oh, thank you so on much. The side, there's there there could be somebody who is. Uh, there there is. I guarantee you, somebody watching or, or listening us here today on the show that. Um, that can really relate to your tragedy uh, of losing your son. You've lost your sisters. Uh, you're caring for your father and your mother. Uh, there's just so much that's gone on. You've had broken relationship. I mean, ups and downs in your life. Yeah. Especially your sons. So we talk about that. 
Um, the person that's listening or watching right now who is fresh into that moment or can't find their way out of it, um, could you talk to that person right now? Yes. And, and the one thing that I would share with you is that you may never get over it. You may never um, feel the same way. And every day, do what you can to heal. Take baby steps. Take the smallest moments you can to move forward and do what you can to start moving outside of yourself. Don't isolate. Don't, don't, you know, blame and shame are, are, you know, nothing. It's something that you need to be aware of and not blame and shame yourself. And you need to make sure that your, your self care and your, your talking and your having uh, a relationship that is, is a, in a, in a healthy direction because um, it's, it's healing. And uh, you know, some of these tragedies that you might go through and some of the things you might experience may not have any, an explanation and it's difficult not to have a, a cause or a, a, an answer. However, just continue to make a choice every day to get up and, and the, the thing that has moved me more in a positive, moved me in a positive direction more than anything is gratitude. So if you can wake up with gratitude just for the, the simple things in life, you know, the fact that I have running water, I have a roof over my head, I have food in the fridge, whatever it happens to be, as, as small as it is, have gratitude for it. And, and that will change your outcome and outlook on life. And, and it's a journey. Every day is a journey. It's a step in the right direction and keep moving in the right direction because you have a gift, you have a message, you have, a, you have something that the world needs to know about. And, and if you can think of it in those respects, um, stay positive. That's you so are loved. That's so true. You are, absolutely. And Russ, you're no better example than you. And you know, for some of those folks that may want to take that step and maybe that healing process could be contacting you. It might be processing that story. It might be sharing something with you on a show. Mm -hmm. um, it would be fantastic. So is there, uh, again, is there a, you have a website, I, would, I assume, right? And uh, some place yeah. to get hold of you uh, at? Russ Johns. And if you, want to, if you want to call me up and have a conversation or get on a Zoom chat, uh, bookrust.com. That's all you need to do. And it goes there and it, it books time. So that's fantastic. Well, that of course will be here on the show. And wow. I'm all, what an amazing. I'm all over social media. So just type in Russ Johns and you'll track me down. Yeah. It'll be pretty easy to find that old white beard on there. Huh? <laughs> and they said, round head, round glasses, a guy was climbing 6,000 feet in the air. <laughs> super, super sign man. Holy so it's, God. it's, a, it's a joy to be here, Matt. And it, happy happy day. And, you know, thank you for sharing this and, and doing the good work that you're doing. And, and like, I, I'm honestly, uh, you know, if, if you don't know Matt, you need to know Matt. So if you're listening to this and happen to happen onto this broadcast or this podcast, connect with this guy. He's brilliant. Thank you, buddy. I, I hope my wife listens to the show. It'd be fantastic. <laughs> that's uh, the psa for the day <laughs> that is the psa for the day well folks you you know that's what we talk about here no matter what you face the, the darkest of moments the uh the uncertainty places where you feel like there's just no way out yeah i just want you to know no matter what there is always going to be a hope revealed 